All right, good evening. Welcome to the Ferrandoze Show on KCAA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Sunday night. Woo! First Sunday, too. We're going to get this show started, but we got to bless the show. Let's go. When I was in my mother's womb, I had a calling on my life to do something in the glory of God and marry it like a wife. Commit myself to his word and never be led astray. And when it's all over, when he comes, I'll be glad to see that day in the morning time. All right, good evening. Welcome to the Frondoza Show on KCA Radio, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCAARadio.com website. So if you got to get out of your car, type KCAARadio.com in your smartphone or your laptop, and you can click listen live or watch live because we are in the studio out here in Redland. So wherever you are, you can always watch us live or listen live. Um, in that prayer you heard in the morning time and in the morning time. And so, you know, sometimes that morning time is not in the a.m. Mm. Sometimes that morning time is when we lose a loved one or a friend. So I'm going to give this first few minutes over to Piani so he can share um, of how we're dedicating this show tonight. man. How you doing, man? You know, um, you know, blessed to be alive, but in, in that morning sense, as you were just referencing, man, mm-hmm. and um, we, we want to dedica- dedicate tonight's show to the amazing producer, Delilah Williams, of God's Trying to Tell You Something to Play. She just passed away earlier today, and um, I had the honor of witnessing the production last night, and yeah. it was a phenomenal production, Black Excellence at its finest. Yeah. So. I, I just wanted to dedicate this show to her and the cast and her family and everyone that's grieving right now. So wow. thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I didn't meet her, but you were, we were talking about yeah. having her on the show and, and the play and all that, man. So it's shocking. Um, but, you know, we don't know when escapes that, man. And, yeah. and, and we pray, you know, that's why we do this, um, for people to have their life in, in alignment, man. So Because you just never know. You know, Amen. When that time is, so thanks for sharing that, man. Thank you, brother. Much love, much love. I don't so, think you can never say the right thing when yeah. someone passes on, but um, you know, much love and um, appreciation to the work that she put in while she was with us. For I'm sure. not familiar, too familiar, but you know, we want to give, as they say nowadays, give flowers when flowers are due, right? Yeah. No Amen. Doubt. Amen. Thank you, Coach yeah. Will. No doubt. And that's yeah. Coach Will is on the line. Shouts out to Rob Lamar, who's either in, on his way or somewhere but he won't be here in tonight he's hopefully will he be might here. be in the air I he think might be in the air yeah right? so yeah he might be in the air so I'll, maybe he'll be here i think he said he's gonna be here next week on the text message so we he keep told me you took a red bull so he might be still in the <laughs> <laughs> make sure you beep out that red bull because they ain't pay for that uh, just joking. Right, 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 right. now you gotta beep it out twice no just kidding right right that <laughs> twice twice i know there are plugs right there how you doing coach I'm doing great, man. It's a great Sunday, uh, great Sunday of football, great Sunday of, you know, of being, uh, having some family time and some things that have been going, you know, going well, man. So excited, working on a couple of projects, a uh, film mm. um, that we have coming up. It's going to be really, really strong and powerful. And mm. Um, mm. just looking forward to continuing to help these, these young student athletes and entertainers get the light. You know, using this great platform that we call Sports Collective Media. No doubt, man. No Amen. doubt. Appreciate you, man. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to actually take care of some bills and play the Comigo public service announcement, and then we'll be right back with some more Sports Collective Media TV radio segments. Shall us awesome. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia, not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. 
Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. All right, welcome back to the Front Dose Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCAA Radio.com website. Whew, let's see, where do we begin, man? Uh, is that another line right there? Oh, we got the lines lit up. So I got a question. Um, this month, I'm going to be talking about because, the word because, mm. right? Um, and I, I chose that because a lot of, <laughs> because, <laughs> because a lot of times we use words, right, to describe our life. And I believe sometimes those words can be a trap, mm. right? So it, what, when you hear because... Like how, how what does that what does what does that mean to you? Or how do how do you use that term? Well, usually you hear what happened prior to the because, mm -hmm. and then the because comes after they explain what happened and why that went awry or went wrong was because of. Right. And then they usually fill in the rest of the story. Right. And so well, now, if I ask you this from a from a personal conversation, as far as you know, when you're avoiding. And I guess we don't say this out loud, but sometimes we use because to avoid responsibility. Mm, yes, right. So that can be a case. so because as an opinion, mm. um, how do how do you hear that? As because as an opinion. Well, I I, I hear it like you said. You kind of hit the nail on the head already. Sometimes people I want to say because of this or because of that happened is the reason why I'm not or this or that or I don't have, but. In there, like you just spoke, there could be a lack of accountability and a lack of responsibility. Yeah. And so I'm using that. This That's my word for this month um, to, to speak from, from biblically because. <laughs> the word of the day. The word of the day. Pee Wee Herman. Word <laughs> <of> the day. <laughs> <laughs> because word of the day. because in, in the spiritual uh, in the spiritual conversation and, and that being about the heart of man mm. um, avoiding responsibility, accountability, mm -hmm. um, blaming mm. as an opinion that that could be something that could be in the way of our walk. Yes. Now, now there is a powerful context of because if it's coming from the scripture as a strength. Mm. Did you did you preach today? No, I'm preaching next Sunday. <laughs> next You're doing Sunday. it right now, too, brother. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just asking, like, though, and I'm 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 gonna you know because we 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 have these men talks, and so Amen. it's important for for us as men you know, to to pay attention to how we talk, Amen. to how we describe life, because right. sometimes that could be in our own way, right? Anything you just want to say about that? Definitely, because it's power in the tongue. Yeah, they do, <laughs> there it is, right? There it is. Coach, yes, sir. you got any becauses out there, man? <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> because no, I just I reflect, <laughs> you know, let me keep it real, man. Because reflect to me, as a, uh, uh, what's the way you want to say it? When you're talking and then, you know, sometimes people say, well, it is what it is. Right, like those right. Those little slogans and little <laughs> things, and, uh, you know, those are things that I kind of, uh, like you said, you kind of create filters for, right? Right. You here because, oh, because that that's because of, like you mentioned, uh, to piggyback off of that, what you heard it during the conversation and what that's leading to. Yeah. And, and because a lot of times it's a precursor to what's going to become an excuse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there it is. And right. the other side of the I, I accountability. Mean, such a long way, but <laughs> this is for the people who are tickling out there. Listen, that it is a precursor to an excuse. Yeah. Because when you say things like, well, because right. a lot of a times, lot of times. <laughs> there was probably something you could have done. To yes. Prevent Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm in agreement with you uh, in that regard of the because, you know, we can eliminate <laughs> the because factor, kind of like in communications courses, you learn how to eliminate saying, uh, right. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, well, exactly. Uh, and you kind of eliminate these little things. So the sharper you become with eliminating things like because and, you know, well, it is what it is. And, you know, you always have these, these precursors to your excuses. You, you know, just a lot more success comes out of it. 
we tend to the last thing but I'll, I'll leave us with it. We tend to um, try to uh, mold uh, what our form of that what we would like our form of adversity to be. We mm. tend to try to mold mm-hmm. what we think that should look like and feel like, and that's not the Most High's plan. Mm-hmm. The Most High's plan is to give you something that was going to happen inevitably, and for you to go through it Mm -hmm. so you can learn the lesson to come out developed on the other side so a lot of times i tell to my i tell to my players uh and entertainment that i work with a lot that our transition is not our progress Mm. our transition is not our progress Mm. the transition is the course of what you're going through to then gain progress Mm-hmm. So said, I was you cannot I like eliminate that. I like that. your form of adversity with the because, because as it's a precursor <laughs> to avoid what reason is for what you're doing. Amen. I'm, I'm, Amen. I like that, Coach. I appreciate you, man, from the football aspect of, of that conversation because it can affect us. And I'm going to tell you this last piece before we get into the first guest. My dad had taught me as a child, as a child, that don't drive in the rain because people drive crazy. So I'm going to tell you how that played out in my life as a grown man is that if it rained, I wasn't going anywhere. Man, I hear you. Like, I wasn't getting in the rain. It, like, it, I wasn't getting in the rain. <laughs> I hear you. I hear right? you. The last but, right. but it it affected my life. It yes. put limitations to this very day. on my life. I, I And I'm, I'm, I just broke through that. Amen. Like Amen. a few months ago. Praise the Lord. Because I had to figure out what was it about the rain that I, like, you couldn't get me unless I had to, had to, had to, had to get caught in the rain. And so when I looked at it and I self-examined and I was like, okay, my dad, and I was like, oh, my dad taught me that. Mm, You put it together. I I put it where it came from. And of course he loved his son. Yes. So it's a protective conversation to be safe. Definitely. But do we realize what we, what we do in some of these conversations that leave it an open end? It's like, it's like we, (laughs) You put it out there, but you never know how someone's going to internalize exactly. it. Exactly. Kind of like pivoting, uh, not pivoting, but connecting, continuing the conversation that we had from the last show. You yeah. know, um, if people take things figurative, figuratively or, or literally, yes. you know what I mean? You never know how they're going to embody that. So Yeah, and that, that literally <laughs> stopped me in life, bro. Like, it literally was stopping me in life. So a lot of times it says, I'm not going to go, you know, to the gym because it's raining. Mm, mm-hmm. And so I'm done. Or I'm not going to um, start exercising because I don't have because I don't have a gym membership. You know, whatever, whatever that is, Those right? Little so precursors that limit us. Exactly. So that, that's that's the word for this month, and I'm sharing that from 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 this as Will as Coach Will was saying from a survival state of mind mm. to versus the spiritual aspect of that because it is empowering if I'm standing in what like Will said and what God has for me Amen. and the strength because of He's. Because he cared for me, because he died for me. Like it, there's a strength in that. So it's just how we talk, like you said, as, as well. The power of the tongue, man. Everything that we're talking about that we should describe is in language. Yes. It's, this is, they all exist in language. So I appreciate you, Coach, for that, man. I like that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, family. Well, I'm P- pass the offering, brother. <laughs> 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 all right. So I believe we got um, Coach. Is it, is it Connor or who? Who's on the line with us? We got Connor on. We should have Connor on at this moment. Okay. So, um, young, a young student athlete from Viewpoint High School. Viewpoint we'll give him a chance to introduce himself. Great young man. Had a pleasure to kind of just watch his rise. He's a young guy. And um, it, it, it's great. It's a pleasure to have this young man on. But, um, you know, let's take a moment and let's welcome Connor Egan. What's up, sir? How you doing? Good, how are you? Great, man, great. Thanks for hanging out with us a little bit tonight. Yeah, of course. Cool, cool. Do us a favor, man. Introduce yourself. Give a little bit of background, but don't give it all away. Right. Um, I'm Connor Ian. I'm in the class of 2025 at Viewpoint High School. And Coach Will had me come on. And yeah, it's just a little bit. I need to play that song by uh, E-40, quarterbacking. <laughs> quarterbacking. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah. you know, we appreciate you again, man, for hanging out with us tonight, man. I, I just got a couple of questions for you. Um, you know, for yeah. me, you know, mental toughness is so, so important. Um, and it, it affects us, each one of us, differently. Like, we all got a different view. So mental toughness is the label of it, right? 
But when, when yeah. you hear someone say mental toughness, like, what does that mean to you? Um, I think mostly just, like, staying calm in games and things like that. Obviously, it's like you get pushed to your limits in games and like you got to stay calm in those kind of situations and, like, still be a leader for your team. And as a quarterback, obviously, you know, not obviously, but you are the leader of the team, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, how did you even get started in, in, in that position, you know, growing up in mm. – you know, how did that How did that come about? Um, I kind of – I just always played quarterback, like, since I was little. So I was, like, flag, and then I got into tackle. And now at viewpoint, I've kind of just gone through, like, the whole system from, like, freshman year and, and JV and then moving up to varsity. And like learning from the older kids and all my coaches. Now you said you played flag first, right? Yeah. Flag football is is a very popular yes. sport. It used to be like for the guys that had their cliques, <laughs> you know, yeah. on the Raptors. Uh, but yeah. now that it, it kind of kept them alive. But now it's like a real, no, you know, live, legit. you know, sport. So, what do you think about flag football today? Um, I don't know too much about it right now, no. but I mean, I loved it when I was little. I had a ton of fun, and I'm sure it's still, still the same way. But yeah, yeah. So, um, your mental toughness. Who would you equate that to helping you develop that? Your parents, coaches, self motivated. Where um, do you think it came from? I definitely say like my parents always like having me like just work a little bit harder. You know, staying extra after practice. You know, doing more any extra sprints or whatever, but yeah, probably to my parents the most. Cool. Um, taking away from last season to this season, how's, how's that transition been for you? Um, well, last season towards the end, I ended up breaking a collarbone, so that was mm. like a big setback, but I came, I came out of that injury and, you know, started working hard and like getting together with some of my teammates and my coaches and we came out way better than we did last year and I'm looking forward to the rest of this season. See, now that's why I like that mental health conversation. How did you deal with that injury, man? Mm. Because, you know, some people go to those dark places, man, and when you're not on the field and that identity is in that quarterback uniform, you know, jersey, how how did you manage all of that? Yeah, uh, it was tough having to sit on the sideline and just watch. But, I mean, I I, I showed up to practices and games and all that, and I think just, like, so being there and, like, a part of the team, like, helped me a lot. And then, obviously, like, all the care and help I got. And it was, like, it was safely, like, it was a quick recovery. So. Oh, that was, that was awesome. Good. Awesome. My, my, my second to last question, um, you know, a lot of coaches say that there's no I in team. And um, I believe that there is an I in team. Um, what do you hear about if I say to you there's no I in team? What first, what's the first thing that comes to mind to you? Sorry, could you repeat that one? Yeah, one if, time? if I if I say to you, there's no I in team. What is the first thing that comes to your mind in that? Um, well, obviously, like football is a team sport, but you got to make sure that like you're doing your assignment right, and you need to be like where you need to be and when you need to be there. But I think ultimately, it's like a team sport, and as long as everyone's doing their individual part, you'll see success. But there's like team chemistry and all all those things that add. In the winning. Yeah, thank you for that. And and and, uh, and yeah. I asked that question because you know, as a soldier, military, twenty four years, and and my transition and my my own identity crisis that I had to go through, understanding that you know that intrapersonal, like to be a team player, you've got to also be healed within yourself. You mm-hmm. can't come, you know, imagine yeah. coming to practice with all this stuff on your mind, right? And you're unsettled. Like, how are you going to pay attention? Like, how are you going to be engaged? And how are you going to give that? That's that that self love away if you're dealing with your mm-hmm. own pride issues too, right? So right. it's not just mental health, but it could be that sense of pride. So I believe if that person, individual person, is at peace with themselves, then you could give you could truly give that love Definitely. away for your for your for your team. So that that's my approach yeah. to that, man. Definitely, definitely awesome. And, and then lastly, for me is you know how important is your hydration, man? Mm. Um, my hydration? Yes, hydration. Um, I'd say it's pretty important. I mean, you don't want to get cramps and all that during games, but I think as long as you're, like, staying healthy and, like, listening to your trainers and, I mean, drinking a lot and Gatorade during workouts and everything, 
uh, I think I'll, you should be good, but yeah. I'd say it's pretty important to me. You're supposed to drink half your body weight in ounces of water per day to avoid dehydration. Definitely. A lot of people oh, don't really? drink that much. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't drink that much. So I appreciate you, man. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to pass the pig skin to Ipiani <laughs> over here. Definitely, definitely. Nice to meet you, young man. Um, the question that I, I have for you is, um, as you shared about your parents, I wanted to know, because I know the coaches have an impact in your life and helping mold you and shape you, but I would love to hear your your overall impact from your parents. Like, what have you learned from your parents in realizing that they love you and they invest mm. in you? Because not everyone has that, you know. It's kids out here that are playing sports that are in the foster care system. Mm. Um, there's all kind of dynamics, dynamics as far as relationships and, and family setups and family structure. How how do what do you feel or how do you feel having both of your parents in your life and investing in you? Um, I mean, obviously, it feels really good, like seeing them at every game <laughs> in the stands and having them like be a part of my life on the field and off. I get like. Just recently, my dad had, like, uh, I think a camera crew come out to, like, film me and my teammates. And, <laughs> awesome. You know, that just felt really good. And, I mean, I love it personally. Yeah. Do you let them know that? Uh, yeah, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. For the Definitely. most part. <laughs> Definitely. Well, make sure you let them know that, brother, because, like I said, not everyone gets to know what it feels to um, have unconditional love. Yeah, man. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Coach Will, man, you up next. You know, um, my whole thing was, you know, give us a chance to understand a little bit more about, you know, what are some of your your current goals, right? Uh, what are some of your your current goals versus some of your goals and expectations going forward into, you know, let's say next year in the off season? Right now, what are some of your current in season goals, and then what would you like to see happen? you know, through the development of the season. Can you start there? Yeah. Um, well, right now, I think my main goal and our team's main goal is just, like, finishing strong this season as we're going in the league and, like, hopefully making a run for playoffs and, you know, keeping a winning record uh, and just, like, having everyone stay healthy for the remainder of the season. But I think as far as after that, I think personally – I just need to keep working and get better and get bigger for my senior season and hopefully get some of the same success we've had so far this season. Awesome. Definitely, definitely. And what are some of the things that, you know, um, you like the people to know about you, Connor, you know, as you're going forward? Because it's hard in this new age of recruitment, right, where – you know, we see offers going up. We see right. the social media presence of, of, of you know, all the, you know, the rising stars, yourself included. What are some of the things that you like to focus on that keeps you even keel? Mm -hmm. You know, going into each week knowing that, hey, it is about how you produce each week that then, you know, um, equals out to what the recruiters actually want to, you know, pick you up for the reason for offering a scholarship so what are some of the things that you do to stay even kill as you go forward right each each week each practice you know what is your what is your focus there to, to um you know be successful um i mean as far as that goes i i just i think staying locked in for every practice like as if we're playing to like really get myself to the like the the best that I can be, and obviously, sorry, what was the second part of that question? Just asking how you say, you know, how do you say even kill to be successful every week, you know, while your goal is really to try to get scholarship offers, and <laughs> how do you stay focused and not get sidetracked by what, that, what we call plate watching, right, when you're observing mm -hmm. Um, the kid who has 15 offers and five stars versus the kid that has no offers and no stars. You know, how do you find yourself in the middle to stay focused, stay grounded, go after your success? You know, it's it's kind of hard to, to do yeah. that sometimes. So, you know, what are some of the things you do week in and week out just to stay focused? Is it more training? Is it more schoolwork? 
Um, because the realization is is that there's social media presence out there, and it's kind of hard for you to not see it as you scroll and scroll. So what are some of the things right. you do to stay focused on what the goal is, which is the numbers that you produce week in and week out? I think definitely a part of it is just, like, not trying to do too much or, like, take take it too personal and uh, trying to, like, not play as a team, you know, trying to, like, get your yeah. stats up or – anything like that. I think if you, like, stay locked in and, like, stay as a team player, the stats will come and the wins will come. Mm. And then definitely putting work in, like, on the weekends when you don't have practice. Mm. And, like, I think if you do everything you're supposed to do and, like, listen to your coaches and get recruiting help, offers will come your way. Definitely, man. So before we, man, we let you go, Connor. Once you drop the people your social media, let them know where we can find you and keep an eye on you as the season goes on. Yeah, on Twitter, it's uh, Connor Egan underscore, capital C, capital E. And on Instagram, it's just Connor Egan, Connor dot Egan one. Definitely, definitely. Um, one more question for you, brother. Um, outside of football, what is another one of your passions? Um. I, I'd i say just, like, hanging out with my friends, you know, going to the beach. Uh, I used to surf a lot, but as during the season, I haven't been able to do it as much trying to focus on football. But, yeah, that's just one of them. Awesome, awesome, man. Kalabunga. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> before, before you get out of here, man, my last question to you is, when you're lacing up those cliques, man, or, you know, getting your uniform together, what's in the headphones? Who you listen mm. to? Ooh, um... Uh, I like to, I like Gunner probably the most. Oh, Gunner! Yeah. Awesome, awesome, I like bro. That. Thank I'm you, I'm a Gunner fan too, man. Uh, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Have you that uh, no, we're gonna pass that one. <laughs> I'll let y'all have that. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, man, man. Thanks, Connor, for hanging out with us, man. We appreciate you for sure. We wish you well, brother. Yeah, of course. Thank you. All right, no Good problem. Time. All right, this is a Sports Collective TV media radio segment. Uh, we're going to play the public service announcement and come right back with Coach Will on the line. Ipiani's here. Shouts out to In the Zone, Rob Lamar, wherever you at, man. Shout us out. What's the count? We'll be right back. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. All right, we're going to play some. I want to play this track real quick. Let me see what it, will it play. Were you going to play for me tonight? Let's see what we got. Can you play that tune for me, man, back there? Some, can you play that? Yeah, you got some volume on that for me? Seven 
Shouts out to Paul Pratt from Noah Water. Um, that is the song. Um, Noah Water is not just about drinking water, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Noah Water is about the, not just the ark, but the rainbow, the promise. Um, if you look out in the community, you know, on, on, in the world, uh, the rainbow that is being utilized right now is only six colors. The real rainbow or the actual rainbow from the promise is actually seven colors. So it's seven stripes missing color. Yes, there is a missing color in the rainbow that they published. Yes. And that color is indigo. No, it was taken <laughs> out. It was taken out on purpose <laughs> by whoever utilizes that flag, right? That, that rainbow right now. Oh. I wonder what the significance of indigo is then. So the color, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> so indigo is a missing color. Uh, it is because it is wisdom and intuition that represents your inner awareness and spiritual spirituality. Hmm. So how could you have that color? Yeah, you know, so. Well, be indigo. Huh? No. <laughs> 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 I don't. Um, just to fill everybody <laughs> in, Engineer Joe has got like one-liners for days. Like for real, jump on the mic, Joe. Yeah, shouts, <laughs> shouts out to Paul Pratt, man. That's savage. That's a uh, rainbow. Rainbows by um, Paul Pratt, uh, Detroit Lion, former NFL player, uh, awesome. the owner of Noah Water, hey. and also um, he's in, he's singing now. Part the dehydration. You know, hey, with it's Noah all about Water. hydration, man. Electrolytes, seven point three, seven point zero. Um, you don't want to drink too high of 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 alkaline alkaline or electrolytes because your body needs to be balanced, mm -hmm. right? So you can, it's it could be unhealthy to have an electro, you know, Too high much. level pH yeah. level, right? So you want to balance it, and um, so that's his water. But that seven stripes, missing color, um, yeah, we we we're gonna have Definitely. a whole conversation about that in Genesis okay. and what that promise. Of the rainbow is about is really mm -hmm. about so we're gonna re-educate the community about what that seven stripe missing color is. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you you. Anyways, Coach Will, you there? I'm always <laughs> here, baby. Locked in. That actually is a I, hold. I can't let that slide, yo. That's a parable. When you when you read when you understand what God is doing with that. When 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 he took his son up there, to 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 kill his son, but then he told him the guy told him not to do it because it was a ram in the bush, it was a test. See how much he loved God. You love God that much that you would give up your own son. That's a test. Yeah. So there's there's a parable and there's a, there's a. You got to step. <laughs> anyway, we're not we're dad. not preaching tonight. So. Anyways, thank you. To the engineer, we're gonna have a Bible lesson next week. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna come up here on my own next Over week. Over here, though. proselytizing. Right. Here. <laughs> All right, Coach. Um, I believe um our next guest is here. Yeah. Um. You know, this is another special guest to me. Um. Very educated. Very well rounded. Articulate. Uh. Has multiple talents. I won't give too much away, but the focus tonight is you know his his amazing community work that he continues to do. Um, he has given so much to his community and, 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 and to the city and his rise. Um, so we definitely want to give a major, major warm welcome to um, a, a very close brother of mine and, and coach, uh, Charles Burnley of San Fernando High School. Mm. How you doing, coach? 
Hey, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Hey, everything's good, man. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Oh, no, no, no. Pleasure's all mine. Appreciate it. So uh, let's just go, you know, um, five and one this year so far, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, six and one, technically now. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Friday night over Van Nuys. <laughs> hey okay, now, so hey we're now, six hey and now. one now. So how does that feel so far this year? It feels great. It feels great, man. Uh, my father um, got this job, I want to say, last May. Um, so in the middle of spring, um, not last May, sorry, the pre- previous May. And um, from that point on, you know, we, we knew we had a, a long road ahead of us to kind of turn this program around and um, weren't able to really get it going last year. Mm-hmm. Um, ended the season two and nine. Uh, mm. Definitely a disappointment. Yeah. Um, I came on board as a coach probably halfway through the season. Uh, but this year I've been able to uh, be there from, from day one, from spring ball up until now. Um, it kind of helped my father just um, try to try to cultivate this new culture here that we're trying to reestablish. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's been uh, successful thus far. Can't can't complain about a 6-1 record. Should be, Not at all. 57-0, but it's all good. We'll I, I think that was a complaint, <laughs> <but> nevertheless. <laughs> so before your, your coaching experience, you got some football experience yourself. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, grew up grew up in the Portland area. Uh, like, you know, my dad was a fan. I mean, he, he, he's been a friend of mine my whole life, uh, pretty much my big brother as far as I'm concerned. And um, played football all throughout the San Fernando Valley uh, as, in, in Pop Warner, North Valley Golden Bears, Poima Wildcats, uh, Northridge Knights. And then from there, um, out of eighth grade, I received, uh, I'm going to call it a quote-unquote scholarship. It really was just <laughs> some alumni, some alumni from Crespi um, <clears throat> paid for my tuition my freshman year to attend uh, Crespi Carmelite High School in Encino. Uh, so I went there my freshman year, uh, played, played, bar- we well, played freshman and varsity. We didn't have a JV team. Okay. Played freshman and varsity for Crespi, and then I transferred once we moved up to Santa Clarita to the Canyon Country area, um, mm. and I attended uh, Valencia High School there and uh, pretty much, you know, did my thing there, was uh, all CIS, uh, rushing titles, uh, awesome. ranked in the state as a running back, ranked in the nation as a running back, all that good stuff, and uh was able to uh, get myself a scholarship to attend uh, Oregon State University. Awesome. Um, went there. Unfortunately, I would say that um, I wasn't prepared mentally, and mm. um, I didn't have the maturity that I needed to uh, take advantage of that opportunity, mm. which is m- kind of like the reason I'm doing what I'm doing now, no trying to get back to these kids and trying to prepare them properly. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like I was prepared properly, and that's, no that's no one's blame. It's just, you know, it's just – just how the cookie crumbled for me personally. So when I was at Oregon State, I, I just wasn't ready mentally uh, to be away from home. I wasn't ready mentally to um, be as responsible as I should have been at that time. No doubt. And uh, I only played there for two years or, or two and a half years um, before I ended up, unfortunately, dropping out, um, coming home to pursue a music career, awesome. um, which which was successful in its own right. But in retrospect, <laughs> I really wish I would have uh, – you know, still, still uh, done the football thing because you know the music. It could have waited. It would have happened regardless. You right, know, it probably right. would have been even more successful had I been uh, successful enough to uh, reach the NFL and, and you know use my own money to prepare, my, uh, propel my my own career. No doubt. But um, you know, everything happened the way it's supposed to happen, and now Amen. I am at San Fernando High School with my father as the head coach, and you know we're giving back to the same community that we grew up in. So beautiful blessing. Man, you know, I appreciate you Beautiful. because it takes a lot of courage to express ourselves in those those losses. You know, sometimes people pretend like everything's been fine, but but to look good, right? But we're not yeah, about yeah. looking That's good. Fact. We're about telling the truth because these athletes need to know, like you said, you've got a, the preparation, man. Mm. Being away from home, you're not getting mama mm-hmm. spaghetti. You know, uh, yeah, all yeah. of that, like, yeah, especially if you're going, for, you know, the, you know, a couple states away or on the other side of the country, mm-hmm. you know. So yep. I appreciate you for saying that, man, because, Coach, because this is something that I feel, you know, we have to develop these athletes. And if we get them this young, man, who knows how they can, you know, progress and, and, and have that emotional intelligence, that emotional maturity, you know, even in, in, at a high school. I'm, I'm talking like elementary, middle school levels that we can have these principles taught so they can, you know, grow and develop. So when they get to those 
teenage years, they have that word with all that strength within themselves Amen. to start to either ask questions, right, or or just try to you know have the tools to to navigate. So appreciate that. Go ahead. Definitely, Coach. Um, sounds Absolutely. like you've had an amazing journey and that you're um, here giving back, like you said, in the community that you grew up in. But the question I um, I want to ask, because you kind of shared working with your father. What impact has your father had in your life and continues to have in your life that you're appreciative of? Because, you know, as I asked a young man earlier, you're not everybody has that and you have an opportunity to work with your father right. on a daily basis. I, I imagine. I mean, of course, you, it's going to be places where you bump heads of and course. this and that normal life stuff. But just the blessing of being able to work under the tutelage and guidance of your father and, and help him be successful in his job as well as yourself. How is that? How does that make you feel and what impact has he had in your life? Man, I, I I don't even know where to start with that one because he's had such a tremendous impact on my life from day one. I mean, everything that I've been able to accomplish in life, I would attribute to his tutelage and his guidance um, because the two things that I have been successful in life with thus far are two things that he has also been successful in life with himself. Um, I'll start with the music business. I mean, since I came out the womb, my father was in the music business and uh he had his own independent record labels, and he worked with some, some prominent um, artists uh, like Dr. Dre, mm. e, uh, you know, even Michael Jackson at, at one point. Awesome. So um, I grew up in a household where entrepreneurship was, mm. was taught, you know, from yeah. an early age. So I was able to learn that from him as far as the music is concerned, and that's before I even touched the football field. Mm. I, mean, <laughs> I remember being three years old and having a studio um, in the awesome. living room. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that was just... That was our family lifestyle. Like my, my father was in the music business, um, both as a uh, 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 a record label owner and also as a as a record um, producer. Mm. So he had his own artists, and you know he was making beats and, and and all that. So I grew up in that environment, and then I would say uh, about the age of seven or eight is when he uh, pushed me out there to play for the North Valley Golden Bears, uh, which the first team I was I was on. You know, Will. My, my brother on the, on the line was yeah. the starting uh, <laughs> quarterback. Was the, was, you know what I mean? The awesome. Best player on the team, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm eight years old. I think Will at that time is 11. I think he's about two, three years older than me. Hmm. Um, so he's either like 11 or 12 at that time. And, um, yeah, so that was my introduction to football through my father, um, who also played at San Fernando High School and went on to play at uh, Central State in Arizona State in college. Awesome. So I would say, man, my father's, uh, man, I, I, he's, He's the reason. He, he's, he's totally the reason. I mean, had I been in an unfortunate situation where I didn't have my father, I don't know uh, the outcome of that coming up in this community, mm. um, you know, coming up in the San Fernando Valley or specifically coming up in Pacoima, um, you're going to face adversity. Yes. You're going to face um, gang influence, and, and that's just part of, unfortunately, that's part of, you know, youth, youth, youthful life. Like, as a, as a youngin', you're going to yeah. come across these uh roadblocks if you will and if you yeah. don't have the map to get around it or if you don't got somebody that's been there before to get around it man you're going to be in trouble so you know luckily for me i have my father at all times anytime i bump my head anytime i hit a roadblock man he was there whether it was just life stuff you know dealing with gang influence or dealing with any type of influence as an adolescent um he was there and um anything i needed in regards to football or music the two Amen. things that i wanted to pursue yeah. you know those were his two expertise already so um i i've, I've been blessed man I've, I've been thoroughly blessed i can't even i can never complain about um you know ab about that that aspect of life like family life and now that you know i'm i'm older i got my own children mm. and um i'm able to coach with with my pops and it's it's just a blessing and, and for Amen. me I just I, I want to make this our legacy, you know. What I mean? Hey like man, I it sounds like you know, it's the family business. <laughs> and so I want to make the Burnley legacy is that you know we came through San Fernando High School and we, we put it back on the map and we put Amen. it back in its proper place. So we're both um, you know very excited and, and enthused to to keep this thing going. You know, this turnaround that we've had this year, Amen. Been, you know, just just exciting and just uh, invigorating and just um, making us feel like we have purpose and intent. For sure. And um, you know, yeah. So doing that, doing that with your father, man, it's, it's yeah. no greater feeling, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm honestly blessed. Amen. We, we go, we're gonna go and play this public service announcement because I got a question for you, Coach. When we we'll be right back, the Frondosi Show, no KC problem. Radio. Shout us out, what's the count? Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our 
everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia, not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. All right, welcome back to the front door. This show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. We're up against this whole Sports Collective TV media radio segment tonight. Uh, we got Coach here, both coaches. Um, Coach, I got a question for you. Um, you talked about the community. Um, the, uh, Robert Lamar talks about that 818 all the time uh, <laughs> and all the legends that come from out there. <laughs> but I want to talk about the culture. Um, you know, predominantly that's a Hispanic you know, culture, but is there, has there been a shift? Have you noticed? Well, historically, <laughs> it's always been <clears throat> pretty 50, 50 historically. Okay. I mean, if you go back to the seventies, yeah, we go back to the days of Anthony yeah. Davis, uh, or excuse me, the late sixties, the days of Anthony Davis. And then the seventies, the days of Charles white mm -hmm. and all the prominent players that were on, uh, those teams throughout the, uh, sixties and seventies and eighties, mm -hmm. uh, it was always 50 50. I mean, it, for actually every decade, I would, I would argue, um, uh, 80s, 90s, and, and, and maybe it started to, um, uh, make a, a shift in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Uh, Coach Will could, could help me out a little better with that, with him being a Nando alumni. But, um, <laughs> from my knowledge, um, uh, it's always been, um, uh, pretty 50 50. I think, uh, as, as, as of late, what you're what you're finding is, is that uh, these African American households they're they're seeking better opportunities for their children, yeah. and you can't really blame them. So you get a kid that's coming out of the Pacoima, Stillmar, San Fernando area, and he has the opportunity to attend, you know, a private school through some type of alumni funding or however they, you know, whatever however they get it done. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's an opportunity for that for that kid. So it's hard for that that parent to say, no, I'm going to send you to the local school down the block when they have an opportunity to. Uh, to excel in both academics and uh, athletics. So yeah. I think that's what's happening within the community. And we just want to make, you know, San Fernando has a, has a magnet program as well, you know. So yeah. we want to make it cool to come back to San Fernando um, and create a culture that is, um, you know, uh, diverse and inviting to all, all shades of people, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and we know the demographic of the area is, is, is pretty much – um, 50, 50, or we can argue 60, 40, 70, 30 <laughs> in, in favor of, of um, Hispanics. But, right. but instead you still have, you know, uh, African American presence in the San Fernando area, Stillmar area, and right. definitely in the Pacoima area. So, um, we're trying to make that inviting again, you know, make these kids want to come home. They can still get a proper education through San Fernando's magnet program. And they're definitely going to get I would argue the top notch coaching in the area mm. um, through the staff that we have currently. So um, yeah, it's um, it's interesting, it's challenging, uh, but you know, it's we're, we're up for that challenge. You know, we we, we look at it as a positive, and and uh, Amen. if we sure. can bring us back to the days of great, you know, like I like I mentioned, Anthony Davis, Charles White days, where it was uh, both cultures contributing to the success of San Fernando. You know that would be great. That yeah. would be that would be amazing. So I, I appreciate that's you. That, uh, that I, we're definitely working on. Yeah, I appreciate you for saying that. You know, again, that's for me. Mental toughness is so important. Um, and and even as that athlete with that identity, um, a lot of times we label one another, especially with the way society is is mm. is, is doing it today with yes. you know blacks and whites, Hispanics, and all that. But to right. really exp not just do the unity, but experience the uni you know the unity as an experience, right? And so for me, I, I have this conversation about there's no I in team. Um, what 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 is your philosophy about that I in team, if you have one at all? Yeah, I feel the same way. You know, definitely no I in team, um, especially with a sport like football, which to me is the greatest sport 
in the world because of the uh, collective input that you need. Like yeah. football is the only sport where everybody has to do their job for everybody to be successful. Yeah. I mean, you could take sports like, especially basketball, like one player could take over the game. Like Michael Jordan can take over the game. You can really just ISO him and just get out the way. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. you can't do that in football. Like yeah. you can have a star running back, you can have a star receiver, but if the offensive line doesn't block, the mm-hmm. quarterback has no time to throw to that star running back. Yeah. Or, I mean, sorry, that star receiver. And if you have a star running back, if the offensive line doesn't block, there, there's no point. The running back's going to get tackled in the backfield. And there's many other examples I can give you. But, you know, uh, all in all, yeah, it, 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 it's probably the, the most important sport to have a, uh, a team environment, you know, connected to it. You know what I mean? Everything else can kind of – uh, you, you can get out the way and let somebody take over a soccer game, a basketball game, a hockey game, or whatever. Yeah, but but not in football. Right? You mm-hmm. Definitely got to be a team effort. And that, and that's that's the piece I'm I'm addressing is not that part of the iron team, but that part of the culture, right? And having that intrapersonal relationship with that player who's carrying whatever he's dealing with in his life, mm-hmm. and and then be able to be whole and complete with that conversation, and then give that eye away to his team right and so now you have you know a, a different culture of the football team right. and not just that individualized because you know people deal with a lot of stuff parents be, you know people yes. getting divorced and that child is carrying a whole lot of stuff going on in the house right and it, it's, it could be a distraction and so being able to teach these children you know these type of tools Definitely. to heal whatever they're dealing with with power and, 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 and strength and confidence and courage and and I believe that that allows that athlete to then give that love away to his team mm-hmm. naturally, right? Versus be, being prideful. So I, I believe that could shift the culture. But that's that's Absolutely. my conversation Absolutely. on that. That I see is a little bit different. Definitely, definitely. Um, a question. The last question I have for you, brother, is um, as we spoke about the legacy of fatherhood, what are your hopes for for your children, sir? Uh, you know, to 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 be quite honest with you, uh. I'm actually raising two children uh, on the autistic spectrum. So my hopes for them are, are a little more simplistic, I would say. Yeah. Um, I just want them to be happy. Amen. You know what I mean? I, I just want them to be happy. I know the society that we live in is not uh, as open or as patient, I should say, um, dealing with special needs people that yes. uh, that don't necessarily see the world the same way we do as uh, neurotypical people. So with them dealing with their, with their ailment and, and, and with their um, different behavioral issues or learning disabilities, for me as a father raising two special needs children, I just want them to be happy. Amen. No doubt. Whatever I could do to simplify their life, you know, and, and make it as happy as possible. All right. Before, I could have gave you the uh, <laughs> the cliche mm-hmm. answer, but I'm dealing with a really uh, specified, you know. Uh, parental situation you know what i mean yeah. so i can't really just give you the no, you no know, we, we, the we appreciate you i got one God last question you. we got like like i gotta you gotta give me this answer in like 30 in like 30 seconds gotcha. battle rapper man top 20 ah. come on is it like that oh yeah 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 <laughs> i'm definitely top, I'm top 10 of all time without, without a doubt <laughs> Man, we got to bring you back for that music segment, man, because I like to hear some more about this battle rap and this music. Where career. the videos? Where can we find the videos? Uh, just my, my my artist name is B Dot the God, so just uh, the type God. that yeah. in. Okay. Um, it, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a conscious rapper, so it's, no, it's that's more beautiful. like cool. That's beautiful. Yeah, so yeah, cool, definitely man. check me out. Yeah. Coach, cool. thanks for your time tonight, man. We appreciate you so much. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. No, appreciate y'all. God All bless right. you, brother. So we got like a few right, seconds, man. It. Coach Will, man, thank you, man. Thank you for the night, man. We appreciate you. See y'all in the studio next week. Sports Collective TV Media right on on Instagram, Twitter, at What's the Count. Shout us out. Peace. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, 
but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veterans discount code. K. C.